I have a brand new Wacom tablet in the studio right now, down here. Let's unbox it, let's take a look right now. <sighs> Maybe not what you're expecting? I know, I'm sorry. A little bit clickbait here, but you got to see this tablet, it's absolutely awesome. It was back in the day, I had one of these. This is from about 96, 97-ish. The Arts Z2. I knew it as the Wacom UD1212R. An absolutely phenomenal tablet. This tablet was large, this tablet was accurate. This isn't the one that I had back then. I've just gotten this off eBay. Brand new, unopened in the box. Even though the box might look a tiny bit scuffed. Yeah. But the tablet itself is still in beautiful, brand new, immaculate condition right there for over 20 years. I think it kind of deserves that unboxing, don't you? Full 1212 active area with transparent overlay allows for easy placement of artwork or template. No constraining cord or batteries to replace. The Erasing Ultra Pen is light, slim and perfectly balanced. 256 pressure levels, wow! The harder you press, the wider the line or the more dense the colour becomes. Light pressure gives you the lighter colour and thinner lines. Use the pressure sensitive eraser to remove or soften the image or as an immediately accessible second tool. Okay, let's open it up. This looks very, very cool. One layer, two layer, another little cardboard layer. Yeah, and I'm in. Okay, so first off the bat we have an instruction manual. You remember those? Yes, not just PDFs online. They are proper little bookies. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Oh, wow, and color pages. Well, bits of colour, but look at that. Retro! That's what Mac OS used to look like. Yeah, champions of design. Next, what have we got? There's something else paper in here. Let's have a look. Ah, there we go. Ah, our warranty card by the looks. Indidiosa. A warranty card. How cool is that? Um, I'm just I'm just retro feasting here and there was something inside of that which is just a leaflet and that says Wacom's full line of I can't read that graphics tablets accessories and no that's not a book that is just a single sheet of uh, the size is called DL but that's one third of A4 and you can see on the back there, other stylus options from Wacom there that were out at the time. And that, it moved around, it could sense when it was on the tablet and where it was. You could change things, change options, etc. It wasn't a mouse. You still had to use your stylus. That was for coordinate picking. Very cool little tool, a lot of people have forgotten about them. But they, those tools, they are the precursors to the Microsoft Dial. And that's how long ago they were being done. Mainly architects and, and you know technical designers using them, but they were very, very cool. I had a play with one, but never had, never owned one. Couldn't get them, too expensive. For me back then, about I was like a 17 year old who wasn't a professional. I was just, you know, drawing for the fun of it. So yeah. And here's something that I was desperately hoping to see and ha oh, ha look at that. That is a thing of beauty. The UP801E. That is an old Wacom stylus right there, but it's still got the eraser. Still got spare nibs. Still got a rocker button. I mean, not too much has changed in terms of the design. We'll take a look at that in a minute. We'll crack that one open in a minute. It's got the steel opener ring with it and now everything's there. What else is there? There's something else in here that I can't quite get. It's a bit bubbly. Don't want that. Oh, there we go. There it is. There's the other thing. That's completely sealed. No way to get at that without breaking that plastic bag. 
That is. There you go. That's a whack on pen stand, the original style. So it was an angled little pot like that. It doesn't open up. You just slot your pen in and it's good to go. And it's heavy as well. That will not fall over. So what else have we got? We've got some other stuff over here. Have an AC adapter. 120 volt. I bought this on eBay. Um, a woman in Sweden was selling it. Her long-term boyfriend had moved out and left it there. He'd had it for years and years and years and never ever used it. This had been unopened, you know, just kind of sat in their loft. So she was selling on eBay. I got it for 99 pence. I had to pay a lot more in delivery, but yeah, I, I can't... This was bizarre to me, the, the very fact that, you know, you pick some up so cheap. But there you go. Um, that's why it has not got a British adapter. That's why it's got this style of adapter. It's still got the cable tie on it from the factory. That's pretty cool. And this box looks like, you know, like looks like something I could have just bought. It doesn't look over 20 years old. You know, none of it does because none of this has been opened or touched within 20 years. So that is the Wacom table. Now this was a serial port tablet and it used a cable that splits at one end. There's this connector here and this connector here those two ends then both go into the serial which goes into the tablet one of these ends goes into the computer now when you wanted a stand for this tablet that's what you got that's your stand that's what you can raise it up on if you want an angle. That's as good as it got back in 97. We did not have Ergotron arms, we did not have anything else. Saying that, this tablet, I never used to use it on my desk. Um, there was too much other stuff on my desk. Basically, I used to just sit with this tablet on the bed or on the seat, you know, and just with it on my knees. And that was cool. Certainly enough about then. Anything else? Not in that section. Okay. Something else right here. Ooh. Okay. Now this is where it starts getting really retro. Floppy disks. Whack on pen tools. And I believe, without looking, that one is the drivers. Yep, for Macintosh. Look at that, for Macintosh. Not for Windows, not for anything else, Macs. They're, both of these floppy disks are for Apple Mac. Back then, if you wanted Windows, yeah, you could, you could get it. Probably works. Worth checking out. What else we got? Oh yeah! And there's the tablet. That, my friends, is an absolute thing of beauty. Look at that. Look how good that is. That's a 12 inch by 12 inch tablet. So 12 by 12. And it has this. So you can put your paper underneath. 
it's great if you were a comic book artist. I mean, back then, that's what I used to do. I used to do a lot of comic book art. And it was great because I could shove my pencils under there, it's my rough sketches, and then just draw on top, you know, and it would all go into the computer. And that was mind-blowingly good, even on Photoshop, like, 4. Not CS4, not... This was just Photoshop 4. It, you know, it went up 5, 6, 7, 8... Did it go to nine? I can't remember. And then, it, uh, you know, and then it went to CS, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then it went to Photoshop CC. So this is how long ago that was. Um, and yeah, factory fresh. Hmm, Japan. I have no idea. That's just. It has that. I don't know why I'm doing a sniff test, as if you guys really want to know that, but I do, so. It smells of nothing. It smells of plastic, but, oh no. I was expecting it to smell of time, of experienced art. Tell me, tell me your secrets of art from years ago. Oh, you don't know because no one ever used you? Oh, okay. That really is a thing of beauty, though. And on top, you can clearly see hotkeys. They're completely flat, you can't do anything with them, apart from when you're using the stylus. But they were there. They are the forebears to express keys today. How cool is that? So we had, yeah. I mean, look, look at that. Cut, copy, paste, undo, delete, new, open, save, print. Printing was still a thing back then. I don't even, I have a printer now, but it's kind of in another room. I don't use it, never plug it in. The only time I really need it is when I have to print out travel documents or when my in-laws come around and ask for a print out. And that's the only time I plug my printer in. So it's weird that print is a button. Never used to be weird, but it is now. So you can change the pressure to firmer or softer. Look at all those keys, they're absolutely fantastic, aren't they? Even though you didn't get any haptic feedback or they weren't shaped in any way, they're just completely flat, just like pictures, but they worked with the stylus. And that was enough. That was awesome. And this is kind of, when I think of it visually, this is what I think of. I think of the back and how shaped it was and how I could use all this to grip it with my knees. And there's a close-up of the label that's on the back. Yep, the UD1212R. So there's your port, your one single port. You have a serial port and you have an on-off switch. Ah, oh, it's a good solid switch. It's like NASA engineering. Back from the 90s. <laughs> it's not as beige as I remember, it's kind of a cool grey. Um, which I think still looks beautiful now. It's probably a fashion thing, it probably falls in and out of favour, but... That to me is, is still a very nice looking tablet, you know? It's amazingly thin, it's amazingly light, you just sweep it on your knee. You can draw away, not have to worry about anything. There's, there's not much in this. You know, there's the feedback board, the EMR feedback board from a very early version of EMR technology. Um, maybe a circuit board over here as well. And that's about it. You know, you haven't got too much to really contend with. Some little rubber feet. These feet here, I never had these feet. I never once had these feet. I had seen them though. But these feet just snap on like that to give you 
that much of an elevation. Look at that, wow. That's how much elevation you get. Um, you know, it's a shame they're not like that. Okay, so here's a stylus for the Wacom Digitizer 2 UD1212R. And the box says this is a UP801E-OOH. All right, it's not ergonomic like the newer designs. And you can see the difference in length again there. The eraser was there and that was brilliant. The tip was very fine and small and easy to use. It feels like a biro. It just feels like a biro. But that rocker button there, the two buttons, amazingly comfortable. If I'm sat here drawing like this, I just push down my thumb to press that first button. If I want that second button, I just kind of roll my thumb back until I get it. There you go. Dump. Dump. Slide it on back. And while that first button, dump, pressed. And that's brilliant. All right. The one improvement they could make is to stop my fingers slipping down the stylus when I've been working for hours and my hand gets all sweaty. Oh, look. They did come up with a way of doing that. Maybe this has been a nice chance for you to see what, you know, somebody your dad's age is using back then. This was... An absolutely cracking piece of tech. It was the best of the best. You can see how far Wacom have come on and developed their tablets and their styluses as well. They developed the Cintiq range, the monitor tablets. They developed the stylus technology. This and this have a lot in common. And they're both, you know, very, very similar. It's really only the ergonomic design. The fundamentals of the stylus are the same, but 256 levels of pressure, 8,000 plus. So, you know, a little bit different. But still, nice to see this. I can't plug it in, unfortunately, because this requires an old style serial printer port. And yeah, I don't own anything with that. I don't even own anything with a CD ROM anymore. But I'm either gonna have to put this back in the box and let it go in the attic, or I'm going to try and track down a serial port connector that can that could run this or I could pay somebody to turn this into a USB device for me always an option I shall see you soon have a great day let me know your thoughts and comments below did you enjoy the trip down memory lane I'll speak to you soon well thanks for watching be sure to comment like and even subscribe to my channel, Lawrence Can Draw. And if you really did like what you saw here, you can see more of it on my website, lawrencemann.co.uk. I'll see you next time.